back folks and here we go with applying our uncertainties to measurements, a genuine higher level skill that you have not done before. So uncertainty type one of two are the reading uncertainties. Now we're going to spend longest on these um, because they're the, the best ones to really get to grips with what an, uh, the idea of what a reading of what an uncertainty is generally. So we're going to do quite a bit with work of work with these and then do random uncertainties at the end. So reading uncertainties are sometimes referred to as scale uncertainties. Okay, and I'm going to use the shortening symbol delta R to say them. Okay, now delta R is the official symbol for reading uncertainties in advanced hire. Um, you don't often see it used in official um, textbooks or questions for hire, uh, but there's no harm in using it. It's an easier thing to write than reading uncertainty every single time. And the symbol delta, change in, um, is the universal symbol for uncertainty. So, we used two different kinds of measuring device um, for our three basic measurements. One device was analog, okay? Now an analog device is any kind of measurement device with a scale on it that we then read our, our uncertainty from. No, our measurement, sorry. We read our measurement from, okay? So an analog scale is something where you make the decision of what that measurement is. You read it off the scale. Analog. So some examples of this are, of course, rulers, um, liquid and glass thermometers, uh, measuring cylinders, these are all things where you read a measurement off a scale. Now, we're often quite guilty at thinking that just because we read something off a scale, rather than a screen telling us the measurement, that this makes the measurement um, in some way less accurate. There's that word again. Okay, um, it's, it's not as good because we've read the scale. And that is actually simply not true. Okay, there is no better device in the world for making a reasonable scientific decision on a measurement than the combination of human eye and human brain. Okay, we are the best tool in the world to make a good scientific decision. So actually the reading uncertainty for an analog device is very small. We reckon that human beings can make an accurate judgment call about reading a, a measurement to within half the smallest division on that scale. And actually, I did make that call when I measured my five lines, 3.95 centimeters, okay? So that position, one, two, 3.95, the five, isn't something that's marked on my ruler. I was judging that the, the fifth line lay halfway between 3.9 and four centimeters, okay? Now, we reckon the human eye can accurately judge that. We don't think it can judge a quarter of the way between two small divisions um, or three quarters, but a half is reasonable. So the reading uncertainty for all analog scales looks like this. Measurement plus or minus, so that's describing the range, half the smallest division. Okay, so let's look at that with our own measurements. So the first measurement we took were our five lines. So that measurement for me, and I imagine for most, a lot of other people, some may have measured it as 3.9, some may have measured it as four. Um, 
wherever you are, it may be that you have lines that are slightly closer or further apart. Um, but I measured mine as 3.95. Now I'm going to leave my unit for a second. So my smallest divisions here, as the same with all of you, I imagine, are millimetres. So half the smallest division is half a millimetre. Okay? So that's plus or minus zero centimetres, zero millimetres, half a millimetre. Okay? Centimetres, tenth of a centimetre, so a millimetre, half a millimetre. Group it together, everyone gets the unit. Okay? Let's do our blade of grass. Uh, my measurement was 10.10 plus or minus. Now I used exactly the same measuring device, so it has exactly the same reading uncertainty. The uncertainty comes from the scale of the measurement device, not from your measurement. 0 0.05 centimetres. Now that discussion about precision and significant figures we were having earlier becomes even more important now. I cannot have an uncertainty that is more precise than my measurement. So if I can state that my uncertainty is half a millimetre, I have to have a measurement that goes to that level of precision. Otherwise, why am I stating I'm, only uncer I'm uncertain to only half a millimetre, but I'm not actually measuring all the way to that level of precision? Okay, I'm not giving that much information. So they must match, okay? The decimal places must match for your uncertainty and for your measurement. So we're gonna do two more examples now using this analog reading uncertainty. I'm just gonna make them up. So yours are gonna, you're just gonna take yours just from me and your note is gonna look exactly the same here. Um, we'll have had a slightly different number there for the grass, but apart from that, our, our note should be pretty much the same. So in example two, um, I'm just going to use a slightly larger number just to kind of um, think about what this precision actually means um, for our, our measurements. So say I'm using a measuring tape and that measuring tape can go meters and meters and meters. Say so it's like five meters long, okay? But it's just like my ruler. It has dashes of millimeters. So let's say I want to make the measurement D equals 1.2 five meters. Okay, well my reading uncertainty is still half a millimeter. 0 0.5 millimeters, that's 0 0.05 centimeters, that's 0 0.0005 meters. Okay, so now I have to, if I want to apply that reading uncertainty, and that is genuinely the scale reading uncertainty for using a measuring tape that has millimetre dashes on it, I have to make sure that I am stating my measurement to that level of precision. So, I am saying here that I measured something one metre, 20 five individual centimetres, it wasn't any millimetres, and it wasn't any half divisions forward. So my measurement lied, lay exactly on the five centimetre line. It didn't go any small millimetre dashes beyond it, and it didn't lie in between any dashes either. Plus or minus 0 0.0005 meters. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that is data gathering at the higher level, folks. And that's where I don't think we've maybe given that much thought to our data in the past. It hasn't been asked of us necessarily, okay? But that is why taking data at this level requires just a bit more thought. So in example three, we're going to do a larger measurement again but we're gonna make it more like being in the classroom. So say I want to make another measurement that's beyond 
a meter. Um, but I want to use the classic measurement device of the meter stick. Okay, now we've all done this in the classroom. We're having to measure something that's beyond a meter. We've got a meter stick, so either we put a bunch of meter sticks together and we line them up, or perhaps we mark where the meter stick ends and we move the meter stick forward to make that extra measurement. Okay, now I think we can all agree that at, that adds some significant uncertainty to our measurement. Meter sticks can are, often are made of wood and they wear away at the ends. Often they wear away at one end more than the other because that's the end that the scale starts at and we tend to bang that one onto the ground more. Um, they don't line up perfectly. Um, you've got, um, we often find that the as they go up they become quite angled. Um, or if you're marking and moving and measuring a, a meter stick to make that extra measurement, that adds a huge amount of uncertainty to our measurement. So guys, half the smallest division is the minimum reading uncertainty we can apply. But the reading uncertainty is supposed to tell anybody looking at our, our measurements, anyone looking at our experiment, is supposed to tell them the genuine range of numbers that we think this measurement lies within. So what we're saying in these previous ones is that my measurement of the grass I measured it as 10.10 centimetres, but it could have been 10.1 up to 10.15 or down to 10.05. That is the range that I think that measurement, I am confident that measurement lies within. Now, I don't think we can be confident of a half millimetre range when we use multiple metre sticks. So say we want to make a measurement of 2.05 meters, okay? What do we think is a reasonable reading uncertainty for that? When we put those meter sticks together, say we're using uh, three meter sticks, when we're putting those meter sticks together, how do you think that affects my measurement? Can I now be measure, um, can I now measure accurately to within a whole millimeter? I think that's still too generous. I'm going to say I can be accurate to within five millimeters. Now that's probably still giving myself a lot of credit. So I'm saying that putting these measuring st these meter sticks together is putting my measurement off to a maximum of half a centimeter. You know, just saying it out loud like that, that doesn't sound like enough. I'm going to put it off by a centimetre. I reckon, mm, yeah, I reckon putting all those metre sticks together could probably put me off by about a centimetre. So, let's say our reading uncertainty is now a centimetre. So that's zero metres, zero tens, one centimetre. Okay, so D equals 2.05 plus or minus 0 0.011212 meters. Okay. So guys, that's actually quite rare in higher that you would have to do that. It's very unusual, for example, when they ask you to do uncertainties within assessments or within exams, and they will do, um, they're going to use pretty standard reading uncertainties. The standard reading uncertainty for analog devices is half the smallest division. However, um, when you're doing actual experiments, and particularly in your assignment, one of the best things you can do, evaluative processes and talk about in your evaluation, is increasing your reading uncertainty to more accurately represent what you think your measurement really lies between, okay? Um, there are lots and lots of reasons why you might not be able to use a measuring device to its absolute best potential, which is what half a measure, a smallest division is insinuating. There are lots of reasons why you might not be able to use a measuring device to its absolute best potential. A floating measurement, uh, things being at angles, a side not being perfectly straight, um, objects moving very easily as soon as you touch them or want to measure them. There are lots and lots of reasons. So when you're actually carrying out experiments, and particularly when you're doing your assignment, raise your measuring uncertainty if you think um, half-smallest division is just too small. 
the most important thing to be is truthful in your science. And your reading uncertainty should really cover the range of numbers you think a measurement was likely to cover so that um, you're never giving a measurement um, that is untrue. So I'm just going to pause there and in our next video we're going to look at how we can compare uncertainties from completely different measurements, introduce some new language and cover the reading uncertainties for our digital measurement. See you then. Thanks folks.